Hey, folks, welcome to the AC Mike Show. I'm your host, AC Mike Lopez. The AC stands for Atlantic City. Come visit us sometime. On the AC Mike Show, we'll bring you all things Atlantic City from public service, sports, dining, entertainment, and everything in between. On tonight's show, we have a few special guests. Mayor of Atlantic City, Marty Small Sr., radio host of The Other Side of Midnight, Frank Morano, and you can hear that on 77 WABC New York City. And Joe Lupo, president of Hard Rock Atlantic City. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be back with the first guest, Mayor Marty Small Sr. of Atlantic City. Hey, folks, welcome back to the AC Mike Show. Our first guest is a special guest. Tonight, we have the mayor of Atlantic City, Mayor Marty Small Sr. He is Atlantic City born, Atlantic City bred, and Mayor Small, can you finish that, sir? And when I die, I'll be Atlantic City dead. And thank you, Mike, and to your viewing audience. And it's a great day here in the city of Atlantic City. Can we say great day? Great day. There we go. So, Mayor Small, thank you again for coming to uh, the show today. Listen, here we go. Uh, just what we just talked about a little bit. Uh, I'm Atlantic City born, Atlantic City bred, and when I die. Tell us a little bit about that and the, the passion and the and, and the desire of what you have being from Atlantic City, living in Atlantic City, and knowing that you're going to stay here. Tell us a little bit that feeling. Uh, yes, um, Atlantic City is a very special place. Atlantic, the great city of Atlantic City has been good. Uh to my family throughout the years. And I'm a proud product of the Atlantic City Public Schools. Um, you know, went on to Stockton University, my alma mater, which, you know, this is a Stockton uh, TV show. And, you know, I came back to the city wanting to make a difference in the lives of you. And I've been doing that um, ever since. I've been a career recreation professional. I got my start here. Um, six days after graduation, I played um, in the United States Basketball League for the 1998 champion. Atlantic City Seagulls. I then went on to um, be a social caseworker in the city's welfare department. Um, my political mentor was the late great Senator Assemblyman and former mayor of the great city of Atlantic City, Jim Whalen. And he told us, he said, hey, you know, go to school, get, get good grades, graduate and come back home and get a job. And that's what we did. And I got my start here at the city. You know, from there, I ran the Safe Haven program. Then I ran the Boys and Girls Club for four and a half years, got involved in politics. Um, ran the after school sports and clubs program for the Atlantic City School District for 11 years. Had a um, stint at Principal Academy Charter where I was the Dean of Athletic Recreation and Governmental Affairs. And, you know, of course, youngest councilman elected in the great city of Atlantic City's history, um, city council president. And now I'm the mayor. So my foundation is Atlantic City. I'm Atlantic City born and Atlantic City made me who I am. My life experiences have prepared me for this moment. And I ain't going nowhere. So that's the part where when I die, I'll be Atlantic City dead. Had all the options in the world, um, you know, due to my education and my experiences. But I chose to uh, keep my roots here and, you know, build a house in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And we love you for that. And you let us know it. And it's so important to have a mayor and public servants in whether it's Atlantic City or Atlantic County or the state of New Jersey and our nation that are um, passionate about where they live and what they're doing and who they're serving. So you touch on a little bit, Mayor, mm -hmm. to tell us a little bit about your experience here. Being we're in Stockton, I'm so gracious to the Stockton University alum such as yourself and Dr. Kesselman for allowing uh, AC Mike to have this show. Tell us a little bit about that experience back in the day. Well, it was a great experience. <clears throat> Initially, I didn't want to go to Stockton, but circumstances, uh, you know, led to that choice. And, you know, I didn't take it seriously when I first came there. I chose money over um, the full college experience because <clears throat> um, to opt out and stay off campus, I believe I had like $5,200 a semester. And I was back home in AC, you know, hanging out with my friends and not taking it as serious. Um, just doing enough to get by and almost paid for it. Um, I was initially, officially uh, kicked out of school um, because my GPA had dipped below a 2.0. And my basketball coach, the legend, uh, Jerry Matthews, uh, called then Dean of Students, uh, Harvey Kesselman, and made a plea for me, said, look, this kid is going to be a program maker on the court. But more importantly, I think that he's going to succeed in life. And 
you know, he failed one class and we don't want that uh, to be a deterrent. You know, please give this kid a chance, so forth and so on. And as they say, uh, the rest is history, but I would never regret my Stockton uh, experience for anything in the world. <clears throat> in addition to that, I met my lovely wife there. Um, I uh, met Tony Bethel, who was my EOF counselor, who was one of the best men uh, in my wedding. And it was always a family atmosphere and the whole EOF program, Stephen Davis, uh, Barbara Haney, uh, Debbie Joseph and the whole crew. It was always a family atmosphere and I wouldn't change that decision uh, for nothing in the world. And as I said, at the groundbreaking for Stockton AC phase two, I told the story about a young kid who got a chance and I said, by Harvey Kesselman and that kid is now in the mayor of Atlantic City. That, and that was pretty cool. I was there actually at that groundbreaking. It was a great time yeah. with the governor and, and Miss Oliver and, and I, everyone else that was there. It was a beautiful day too. And I believe in October. So Mayor, we're going to go two places here with this. Um, what do you see yourself and, and give some advice to uh, youngsters and, and they don't have to only be youngsters, folks that want to get in public service, explain to that, uh, you know, because we need, we need big leaders. We need good leaders. We need people who care. So I think it's more important now than ever before. Well, you know, a lot of people shy away from politics because it gets messy. And I just tell people that um, if you're in it for the right reasons, that will always shine. Um, I'm truly in it for the right reasons because some of the situations that happened to me and for the, uh, you know, amount of scrutiny and and all of that. And at the time, being a part time councilman, it, it sometimes it wasn't worth it. But it always came back to what am I here for? I'm here to serve the good people of Atlantic City. It's my passion. And regardless of the situation, I'm not going to let anyone drive me away. I would tell people that it's not all what you see that will be adverse moments. Right. But I live my life by the quote by the great, the late great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it's the ultimate measure of a man is not we stand at moments of comfort and convenience but we stand at times of challenge and controversy. And as long as your heart's in the right place and you want to do good for the people, you'll always do well. And that that's what's up. And I believe that's what, like you said, when you talk about heart and soul. So listen, we only have about a minute left. We're going to ask you a question. It's a big question. Me and you need about an hour, whether it's on your radio show or mine, that when we get to talk, but big picture, Mayor Small, national scene, uh, state scene in about a minute. Tell us where you see Atlantic City in the next few years, sir. Well, I see the great city of Atlantic City continuing to be fiscally responsible. I see um, development coming here. We want to lure in the middle class. We want to focus, in, focus on bringing family and entertainment here. Because as we know, we can't depend on casino gaming alone. We will always be a casino city. We're the first, you know, on the East Coast. We were Monopoly. And, you know, the days are changing where... You know, casinos are popping up and municipalities near and some people are going to make fiscal decisions. But I put my money on the beach, the boardwalk, the fine restaurants, all that we have to offer. You're going to see a government that um, who's um, going to continue to thrive. You're going to see quality of life programs like we did with the senior services program, the anti-violence and the multicultural services programs that truly reflect the diversity. You're going to see an aggressive administration like the administration that got Trump Plaza torn down. You're going to see continue to see a responsible administration who has a new short-term rental ordinance that, that will bring in more money for the city as well as improve the quality of life. Listen, people have always counted the great city of Atlantic City out. They counted this out in 2012 with Sandy. They counted this out in 2014 with five casinos closed. They counted this out in 2016 right. when it was a bankruptcy situation. And we just keep reinventing ourselves and moving forward. And as we often say, it's going to continue to be a great day here in the city of Atlantic City. Mayor, you said it all right there. Listen, put that fist up. I'm going to throw you a pound from here. I uh, want to thank you for coming out to the AC Mike Show. I want to thank your wife, Principal, and Dr. Small, your family, and all that you guys do for Atlantic City. We appreciate you, bro. See you on the 48th. And uh, it is a great day here in Atlantic City. Be well. God bless. Yes, thank you. So, folks, don't go nowhere. Leave that remote alone. We'll be right back with our next guest on the AC Mike Show. Stay tuned. Hey, folks, you're still there. Welcome back. 
Now we have a very special guest. I know I say that a lot, but I mean, this is a very special guest to me, AC Mike Lopez. My friend, 77 WABC radio personality, host of The Other Side of Midnight, Frankie Five Barrels Morano. I got to say it. I love saying it. What's up, Frank? AC Mike, how are you? I'm honored to be on the show. You know what a fan I am of this show, your radio show. And you personally, uh, I've come to consider you a good friend and something of a mentor when it comes to understanding what's happening in South Jersey, culturally, politically, sports-wise, business-wise. And uh, it's a real thrill to finally be on the show. So besides, thank you very much, Frankie. And besides, thank you for being on the show. I want to thank you and a friend of yours, and we'll touch on it a little bit, uh, Joe Piscopo, for you two having me on your show uh, maybe five, six years ago. I don't know. That was my first uh, sort of breakthrough on radio. So, Frank, let's get started from the very beginning, man. Sure. Tell us about Young Frank, your passion for radio. Oh. Where did that all come from? Because, man, it sounds like and it feels like that it's in your DNA and it just you, you plopped out that way. What's up? It, it's so funny that you asked that. I, I guess it comes in a variety of different ways when I was a young person. Uh, to me, uh, radio and especially talk radio is by far the best means of conveying information and entertainment. Uh, sort of, I was interested in the news a little bit uh, when, when I was a kid, but not excessively much. And two simultaneous things um, happened at the same time. One is I was a huge, huge baseball fan. I'm still a long suffering Met fan, but I, I loved any kind of baseball. And in my house, we didn't have cable. So every day I would go to bed listening to the Mets and the Yankees on the radio and a little transistor radio. And I'd fall asleep listening to the baseball games. And then I would wake up hours later hearing all these bombastic, larger than life radio talk show hosts, uh, these colorful personalities using words that I didn't understand, talking about subjects that I couldn't even comprehend. Uh, Barry Farber, Curtis Lewa, Jay Diamond, Barry Gray, uh, a number of others. And so that was happening. And then I just became hooked on the medium of, of radio. I had uh, two uncles. One was very conservative. One was very liberal. Both of them loved radio. And I would always gravitate towards them at our family functions and listen to them quoting from their favorite talk show hosts. And I became fans of all the talk show hosts, those on the left and on the right, and those that were non-political that they would always talk about. So I was hooked at a young age. And for me, it, there's still no better way of conv conveying information and entertainment. It's theater of the mind. To me, uh, it's the only career I can imagine doing. Listen, this is a two-parter, Frank. So I touched on it a little bit. Your former partner, Joe Piscopo, and you. Tell us about how that was. And, and you started before that also on uh, radio. How it went. And then you moved to uh, WABC. Well, sure. So uh, actually, when I was uh, 15 or 16, I started hosting a public access cable show in Staten Island, New York. And uh, I it developed a little bit of a cult following. It was sort of a poor man's Joe Franklin show. I'd have all these uh, colorful characters on. And I was actually surprised at how many reputable people would come on the show. And um, I kind of got in the habit of doing shows that way and interviewing people and meeting folks. Then uh, when I was in college, I uh, interned at a few different places, including a radio station, happens to be the radio station that I worked at, that I work at now, 77 WABC, which is the station I largely grew up listening to, legendary heritage station. And uh, then, um, you know, you get hired part time as a call screener, you kind of work your way up to associate producer and producer. And then being at a radio station, I don't know if it's still like this in a lot of markets these days because of the pandemic climate, but once you're in a radio station, you end up finding all sorts of ways to be on air, uh, either intentionally or just by accident. So uh, I sort of got known as an on-air personality to the WABC audience. I started producing uh, the Curtis and Kuby show with Ron Kuby and Curtis Lee. Well, then uh, it was just Curtis, and then Curtis and I left WABC together to go to 970 AM, which is another great New York and New Jersey station. Uh, I was with Curtis there for four years. And then uh, Curtis decided at the end of his contract that he wanted to go back to WABC. I stayed at 970 primarily so I could continue to have the opportunity to do a show of my own and to be at the ground floor of a new show, which was the Joe Piscopo show. I had known Joe uh, for a time, always got along with Joe, but I got to work with him in launching this new show. And now it's one of the most 
successful um, local morning shows in uh, in America. And Joe and I still have a great relationship. We're still in touch. Uh, we still work together once in a while. And I'm very proud of the work that um, that we did together. And I got to give Joe credit. You know this because he was so instrumental in promoting you and your career. But a lot of people, especially celebrities like Joe Piscopo, they can get very uh, not wanting to share the spotlight with anybody. Very insular. Joe was not like that at all. The guy is such a team player and very generous. And he was very kind to let me have a prominent on-air role on his show as well. And then uh, about uh, about 10 months ago, there was new ownership at WABC. John Katsimatidis, who I've known for a long time, a billionaire, self-made billionaire, immigrant, came here with nothing, bought this radio station. He says, hey, what about coming and doing a live and local overnight show? So I think at this moment, I'm now the only live and local overnight radio show in America. Uh, so uh, it, we're developing quite a following. We have listeners all over the country, not just on 770 AM, but on WABCradio.com. So uh, we have some wacky callers, some wacky guests. You count yourself among those uh, folks, Mike. Uh, but uh, it's been a real hoot, and I've really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun listening, calling and listening to listening to your show is a lot of fun, like you said, with your callers. So listen, we're going to do another two parter here. So you're an eclectic group of friends, like you said, got to go to your wedding. There was a nice group of people there besides friends and family and whatnot. You mentioned Curtis Wheeler. I think there was a Gotti. There was some politicians. There was all kinds of stuff. Tell us about that again, touching on it. We only got about a minute, Frank, and I know that's tough for you. And then tell us your love for Atlantic City. Very well, quickly, uh, for starters, you know, in terms of the eclectic social group that I surround myself uh, with, you know, I really don't have very many talents. I listen to a lot of other people on the radio. They're experts in finance. They're experts in sports. They're experts in the economy. I have no expertise whatsoever, except uh, the one thing I'm very, very proud of is I've spent my whole life building relationships, building friendships and collecting an assemblage of the most unusual, eccentric characters in the world that I fill my social group with. If you're a singing dentist, I'm probably friends with you. If you're an ex-felon, I'm probably friends with you. If you're a, uh, a crazed late night radio caller, I'm definitely friends with you. As far as Atlantic City goes, I can't think of another community like that in the world. I fell in love with Atlantic City when my grandmother used to take me as a kid. We'd walk the boardwalk, we'd go on some rides, loved it then fell more in love with it when I was old enough to start um, appreciating the, uh, the, the, the difficulties and the pleasures of, of booze and gambling. Um, and I have grown a whole new appreciation for everything beyond the vice world of Atlantic City, in part through my friendship with you. But whether it's uh, dining, nightlife, gaming, restaurants, the history, uh, Atlantic City is a magical community. It's almost a place that's more an attitude than a location. And to me, the place that makes it so unique and so magical, I don't care how many states go and legalize gambling, is the people. Because only in AC can you find an AC mic. And that's the only place that I'd want to see an AC mic. Listen, thank you. I couldn't have said it any better, man. So listen, Frankie, we love you, bro. I love you. You know that. Uh, your beautiful wife, thank you for coming to uh, the show with us. I know you got a busy night. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Mike. A big fan of the show. Continued success. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Say bye to Frankie, but we'll be right back with more. <laughs> Hey, folks, welcome back to the AC Mike Show. Listen, we have another special guest for you, batting cleanup here. He is Joe Lupo, president of Hard Rock Atlantic City. Joe, welcome to the AC Mike Show. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Mike. Listen, man, we appreciate you coming to the uh, show to us. Stockton allows us to do this to share with uh, the folks out here, uh, Atlanta County, Cape May County, and on YouTube and social media world. We know you're uh, a busy man just getting back. And we talked a little bit before we went on. It's always great talking to you. And I, I feel as a friend uh, as you, we don't know each other. Great. We don't break bread. I'd like to, but you know what? One of these days we're going to do that. Cause we I am like always you. hungry. You can count yeah. on me. <laughs> I see that. And we're going to do, we're going to do that together. Hey, listen, Joe, let's get right into this. So safe and sound reopening at hard rock with everything that's been going on. Tell us about that, how that's going. 
Uh, it's going really well. I really think it's a differentiator for us. I hear it all the time. I think we're actually, you know, the market's been shrinking since reopening and yet we've been gaining market share. So I hear it from our customers. Uh, they seem really safe that the, the, the measures that we're taking, the resources that we're taking, we spent a lot more money, I think, than some of the other properties. When you walk in that thermal imaging, you see right away that your temperature is being taken and our clean team, you can't miss them when you're on property. So uh, been a been a big initiative for us. We keep adapting with new CDC guidelines, things like that. But we're also, you know, trying to obviously ensure the safest uh, uh, property that we can. Actually, I just saw we have the most employees vaccinated of any casino wow. in the city, and I'm proud proud about that. And I hear that the Atlanta Care is doing a great great job over at the uh, convention center. So a big big help. And and I think as people get more get get more vaccinations and I'm hearing it and seeing it from couples that they're coming in, they feel more safe to do so. And when they walk in and they see that the property is safe and clean and uh, gives that health, healthy perception that they'll come back even more so, especially as the weather gets warmer. Right. And I encourage folks uh, as a, a resident and a frequent visitor to Hard Rock and walk through and say hello to your super team, whether it's Shelly Williams, Nikki Ballas, and the clean team. I mean, I thank them every time what they do. And I encourage folks, the viewers of this show, when you walk through these casinos, especially Hard Rock, as we're talking to the president of uh, Hard Rock Casino, uh, Atlantic City, uh, Joe Lupo, thank those folks because it's a tough job what's going on right now. It's a tough job. It's normal. So Joe, tell us about the recent impressive four month growth in casino revenue. A lot of folks are like, they, they get that confused, but it's been going on for about four or five months. Am I right when I say that? From from uh, Hard Rock standpoint, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yeah. We're 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 very you know happy that that we've seen that growth. We'd obviously rather rise with the tide and right. see the city go up, but unfortunately, the city's seen twenty five to thirty percent declines uh, since reopening, and uh, unfortunately, that's probably going to continue for a little while longer. There's no conventions right. uh, yet. There's no entertainment. We're having a little little bit of difficulty actually booking so many rooms because we can't find the help. Uh, in the city to, to increase our labor force to be able to clean rooms and things like that. But that being said, uh, I think, again, our safe and sound protocols have been a big differentiator. We've been very aggressive in trying to, uh, rather than pull back while, while it's been tough, we've taken a more aggressive approach. And I think our customer base has appreciated it. And uh, you've seen our, our numbers grow. And I just can't be more excited about it. Uh, we've worked really hard. I think our team, to, to the point that you said before, uh, that, that clean team, they, they yeah. I think they work really hard because they've appreciated some of the things that we've done. And I know you've talked about the, the million dollars in ShopRite gift cards and the bonuses right. that we paid a couple months ago. And I walk through the property and I see people working really hard. And so uh, we have a great leadership team, some of, you, some of them that you mentioned, and uh, we're just all working together to create a great team atmosphere. And I think that in itself is a big differentiator when other organizations have let people go and let a lot of their leadership go. And uh, instead I'm trying to hire good people to ensure that we can move forward and, and positively and productively. We're gonna switch real quick here, Joe. I get this question a lot and I'm no casino uh, executive such as yourself, been around for years, been running the biggest uh, casinos, whether it be here and around the country. Uh, can you tell us what is the difference between brick and mortar versus online gaming revenue? And I don't know what to say. I Google it. I still don't know what to say when I do that. I don't know if you do, you're smiling. Well, we, we, we typically talk about the brick and mortar uh, right. revenue as that which is made inside the property. Uh, made at the blackjack tables and the uh, poker tables and the craps tables and the slot machines. The online gaming revenue, which uh, you got to give a lot of credit to the uh, New Jersey DGE and, and Director Rebuck for really pushing that initiative. But the one thing that's different about that revenue is it includes a lot of maybe over 20 other companies that have invested in online uh, gaming here in New Jersey. And they are not made up of, uh, of all of the just the nine properties. So there's a lot more companies involved. Mm. And when those numbers are reported, you know, some of the things that I've talked about is that there's just not that, that there's a lack of transparency. There's not that clear definition of who's making that online revenue. And, and I think sometimes, well, not sometimes, every month it gets reported collectively and therefore it gets kind of misrepresented who's making that money because it's uh, the metric by which it's reported is, is, is through one of the nine properties. 
but uh, those properties aren't making all of that online revenue. So there's a lot of revenue being made online. It's a great taxable revenue. It's helping out a lot, there's a lot of, especially seniors, where some of that taxable revenue goes, but that's not revenue of the nine casinos. It's only a partial uh, piece of that. So uh, there needs to be some more clarification about that. So I think people understand that the actual brick and mortar revenue or the slot and table game revenue is declining at a much bigger rate than what that online revenue is doing. And it's not providing the jobs in the, in the properties and the jobs to Atlantic Cityans residents where some of that online business is actually being done out of Secaucus in North Jersey. And, and we're really trying to here at, at Hard Rock at least, we're really trying to help out the Atlantic City residents and employ the, the, the residents and trying to find those opportunities where they can work in, in one of the properties. So there needs to be clarification on that. Online revenue keep, continues to boom. It will continue to boom. It will continue to grow in other states. And by far, New Jersey has taken the lead on that. And, and we all should be very proud of that. Hey, listen, uh, explained very well and something we'll dig into a little bit more as we get you back on the show again. And uh, we hope that we could do that. Joe, so this is uh, my last two questions. I'm going to put them together because you touched on uh, gearing up towards the summer and job opportunities at uh, Hard Rock uh, hotel and casino. And also talk to us about uh, more entertainment, which we touched about a little bit, uh, conventions, opportunities done safely at Hard Rock. Could you please? Yeah, well, we're going to be having the job fair here in two weeks. We're looking for about 600 people that we need to hire for the summer. And uh, I really think it's going to be a great summer. Uh, I think people are going to come out in droves. Obviously, they're going to be uh, a lot more will be vaccinated. And last summer on the boardwalk, it was very busy. So uh, we're trying to gear up, but unfortunately, we're having some difficulties. And I understand some other properties are as well. And I understand even properties in other states are having the same problem. Some of the stimulus money has kept people from uh, going back to work. So we're going to uh, really get out there. And you've seen probably billboards and on jitneys, we're advertising and taking an aggressive uh, campaign to try and uh, ensure that we can hire some people. So we're excited about that. We're excited that we can have increased revenues to be able to pay uh, employees to come back. And we're seeing growth in our property to be able to do so. So we're going to stay aggressive because it means a lot to our ownership. As we talked about earlier, Jim Allen and Joe Gingoli yep. and Michael Gingoli and Jack Morris, they are New Jerseyans and, and, and residents uh, of, of, of the local region. And they want to see this region get back on its feet. So the only way to do that is with economic strength, uh, employing more people, and obviously marketing the, the Atlantic City as a whole, not just Hard Rock, for people to come back. And uh, there's more competition, you know, new property open only an hour uh, west of right. us. So it's going to be tougher, but we need to keep going and keep working hard. Hey, Joe, listen, want to thank you uh, for coming to the show, uh, spending some time with us. I know you're very busy. Listen, uh, here on the AC Mike Show, whether it's Stockton and on the radio, we're going to make sure we get that out there as far as the job fair and whatever we can do anytime, you know, we will help you. And because you've done nothing but embrace the city. I appreciate so that very much. Well, yeah, hey, all the work you do. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, folks. So there you go. President of the Hard Rock Atlantic City, uh, Joe Lupo. Thank you again. And thank your team, folks. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, it's our belief here at the AC Mike Show that you, the viewers and guests, bring the show to life. Thank each and every one of you for joining us. Special thank you to Stockton University and our guest tonight, Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small Sr., Frank Morano, radio host, Joe Lupo, president of Hard Rock Atlantic City. Folks, to learn more about AC Mike, you can follow me on Facebook, Mike Lopez, AC Mike, Live, Work, Play AC, and on Instagram, that is at AC Mike and J. Remember always to live, work, play AC. And we'll see you on the 48. Be well. Till next time. Peace.